I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to The Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's episode, Grass 10 champion John McNamara gives us an insight into farming life on his dairy farm. And I first asked him about how he got involved. I started farming here, um, I suppose, approximately just over 20 years ago at this stage. Um, We'd have started, I suppose, we'd have had 60 dairy cows, 55 to 60 dairy cows, uh, farming a total of 25 hectares um, at the time. And I suppose over the years, um, we've increased that, both herd size and both hectares. Um, I suppose simply due to the fact that um, we were a firm believer all the time that, you know, grass was a very good feed. It was outside our doorstep and we could produce it very cheaply. Um, so I suppose we focused ourselves on that. We got better at growing grass. We got better at utilising grass. And we went about, I suppose, um, you know, looking to see could we rent more ground or maybe buy more ground um, and then obviously increase the herd size after that. Um, we never were ones for increasing the herd size without actually having the feed in place, first of all. Um, so we actually took it gradually. We made sure, I suppose, that we were comfortable and knew what we were doing because at the end of the day here, we don't have... Um, I suppose, you know, a, a soil type that's, you know, very free draining. Um, you know, it can get quite wet at times and certain parts of the farm are quite tricky to operate in the spring and the autumn. So in terms of, you said that you, you moved from 60 cows. How many cows are you milking today, John? Okay, today we're making 250 cows, um, Emma Louise, um, I suppose on 116 hectares in total. Um, that's divided out, um, I suppose, with a 77 hectare milking block here, which 20 is rented. And so, John, you started farming 20 years ago. So t- talk through your career. Were you an ag college prior to that? Yeah, I mean, it was, no, not really, I suppose. Um, when I finished um, secondary school, um, I suppose Dad, uh, Lord Mercy Miao, he Dad died in 2010. Um, so I suppose we were always out farming. I was um, one of six in family. I had three brothers, um, just very just younger than me. Um, we were all sort of within five years. There was four of us born. So I suppose we were a unit as we were coming through secondary school, the four of us, and we'd have been out various mornings, a lot of mornings, a lot of evenings on the farm. Um, Dad was under pressure, as I said, with his back, and I suppose. Um, when it came to, I finished the Leaving Cert, um, I had a degree course got, but um, at the time he just physically wasn't possibly even able to milk the cows at the time. So um, I suppose back at that stage, I decided to defer the course for a year and um, concentrate on helping him at home on the farm. And within six weeks of actually starting here at home, um, Dennis Crowley, who has since passed away as well, who was the education officer in the Kamalak Chagas office at the time, uh, arrived into the yard one day and said to me, John, uh, while you're farming here for the year, you can probably do the green cert in Kamalak at the same time. So I suppose that probably started me in farming. I suppose between Dennis and Dad, they gave me the kickstart and it gave me, I suppose, a brilliant opportunity at a very young age to get some new, fresh ideas into the farm at the time. And I suppose I'll always be indebted to Dad to actually... Um, you know, to have transferred the farm to me at 20 years of age and I had two sisters still in primary school at the time. And I suppose, t- talk us through then, I, I mean, uh, something that uh, comes up in your search history is um, Mockery Young Farmer of the Year. You know, what were the criteria, I suppose, that that sold you as the, as the as the winner of that as opposed to any other farmer in the country? Um, yeah, it's a very interesting one, Emma Louise, actually, because I would have been very, very much involved in Mockery and Kamalak, Mockery and the Farmer Club. Um, I was involved at a time when we would have celebrated our um, 60 year anniversary as well. We were one of the three founding clubs um, started in 1944. Um, so, um, like, I suppose it was in my macro time that, you know, I suppose I would have learned to know, to get to know a lot more young farmers in the area and a lot more young people in the area, really, um, that I maybe wouldn't have known, maybe, you know, quite as much going through secondary school, um, especially people that were interested in maybe in the same, I suppose, outdoor stuff and the same. You know, a lot of farming interests, a lot of outdoor like like yourself. So, um, you know, Mockra would have been very good. And I would have went on um, and been involved in Limerick County Mockra as well and various officerships in both Kilmallock and Limerick um, over the years. And I would have coached um, a lot of teams as well. Um, and I'd have been on a lot of teams, um, Emma Louise, right through my Mockra career. But I was actually never on um, an All-Ireland winning team. Um, I'd have coached teams to All-Ireland victories and I'd have been on a team that... Um, would have got to an All-Ireland final and not won this year and they would have changed two members of the following year which were the rules and I wouldn't have been involved the following year and I suppose it wasn't until the Young Farmer of the Year competition um, and I would have entered it in its very first year back in 1999 um, I'd have been very young at the time and I suppose I learned a lot from that time and I came back to it again six years later and um, as you rightly said yeah, I was lucky enough to win it uh, that year um, 
in 2005, I think at this stage, um, that I won that. Um, and I suppose it was the first Mokra event that actually I won, uh, you know, in my own right. And I suppose, look, it was an honour that night. And I'll always forget it. I think Albert Reynolds, who another man that has passed away since, was the chair of the judging panel that night. And... Um, you know, I think, you know, we really, I suppose, clicked together and Albert gave me some great ideas that I could take back to the farm. And I think, um, you know, obviously he was quite impressed with what we were doing here at home as well, Emma Louise. And I suppose, you know, following on from that award, like, were there any uh, key learnings or opportunities you took from, from you know, that process that you imposed on the farm? Yeah, Emma Louise, um, you know, I was always open to you know, new ideas, new initiatives, new ways. And the one thing I found from that competition was that knowledge is key. Um, that no matter what you do or no matter what role you're in or no matter what job you're, or occupation you have, you need to have as much knowledge as possible um, for that, you know, job to be successful, for that, you know, c- career to drive on. And I suppose that was one thing I learned at that stage, that if, I, if I'm going to progress in my farming career and if I want to, you know, make it a career that I can pass it on to the next generation, um, then I need to be quite knowledgeable in a lot, a lot of different areas. And I suppose um, I had a share of it done for that competition, but I suppose I have a lot more done since. Looking to another award then, and I suppose this is reflected if you ever, if, if anyone is to walk around your farmyard, you were very successful in the Farmyard of the Year competition. And I suppose, can you give us a little bit of insight and information about what that's about? Yeah, you're correct, correct there, Emma Louise. I suppose, look, all we really have there is like, it's probably no different than a lot of farms if you drive around the country we just really have a bit of pride in what we do um it's just a bit of organization in the yard um every place goes back in its right spot nothing is left blown around the yard you just you just have a bit of pride in your work in your you know in your farming life in your and i suppose it's much easier for family members it's much easier for staff and stuff to get around the yard and you know, it, it, I just think pride is so, so important and it, it makes everything a lot more enjoyable. Once you have a bit of pride in what you do, you like what you do, it makes everything a lot more enjoyable. And I suppose that competition was a real, um, you know, it was just something that we got for, you know, for, I suppose, hard work, really, um, Emma Louise. Um, Dad would have always instilled um, that work ethic and that pride in, uh, f- you know, what we do here in us as we grew up. And um, he would have been lucky enough to win an award back in 1969, which would have been 40 years earlier. It was called the Farm Gate Competition at the time. And I suppose that would again have been for general neatness and tidiness around the yard. And I suppose history repeated itself, if you want to use that term. Um, as you quite correctly said, in 2009, we won the Family Out of the Year um, Award, which again, you know, it, a lot of the focus on that was for, you know, um, I suppose sustainability, hedge grows, you know, um, and the tidy yard in general. And I suppose, look, you know, what, what probably helped us to win that was to, you know, that the judges were able to come in at 10 o'clock in the morning and see a milk and parlor that probably had, you know, had milked 200 cows, you know, an hour earlier and it looked as if no cows had gone through it. And then I suppose, finally, if we move on to um, the Grass 10 competition, and I suppose um, what I would have heard around um, the the event, the Grass 10 final um, in late last year is that it wasn't the only All-Ireland Limerick won in 2018. So if, if we look at that, you know, and go through the process, you entered the Grass 10 competition in early 2018. And I suppose if we talk about the process that you went through um, from then until, I suppose, the final award and you know was it worth it you know was it a good experience for you yeah it was a brilliant experience for me and louise again um, i suppose i learned a lot uh through the various stages of the competition um even maybe you know going right back to actually filling in the entry forum um you know um i suppose look you had to have your fertilizer records you have to have your soil tests on the on the side of it um you know your whole costs had to be right um also you know um you know, you need to be getting the, the 10 grays and cycles, you know, in the paddocks, you you know, you had to be growing, you know, a, a large quantity of grass. And I suppose really like you, you had to be doing a lot of things really, really good, um, Emma Louise. And look, that was no different than a lot of other competitors in the competition as well. Um, you know, the standard was real, real high. Um, it was just the second year of the competition. So I suppose, look, it was indeed an honour to win it. I'd say any of the lads that were there on the final day in December in, in, in that Paddy O'Keefe building could have taken that award. And I suppose, look, I was just one of the lucky ones on the day. And, you know, I suppose, look, you, you again, it was a bit like the Farm Yard of the Year uh, competition. You, you, um, you know, I suppose we were rewarded again for maybe, you know, it was a difficult year at the start of the year. But I suppose, look, hard work and getting a lot of the basics right, um, you know, probably stood to us in the, when the results came through. 
And if we look forward, then like a lot of what you've talked about, John, um, you know, throughout our conversation, you know, you're reflecting on what has happened on the farm. You know, you've made reference to your father, um, you know, your ag advisor, um, you know, lots of people that have gone before you and have, I suppose, carved out a really attractive career path for you. Um, if we look to the future and I suppose, you know, wh- what way do you envisage things going on this farm in the next 20 or 30 years? Yeah, sure, Emma Louise. I mean, it's a very different question to answer, really, on one hand. I mean, you're looking into a, a you know, a glass, a glass ball, really, and you're trying to see. I mean, I'd always want to try and be optimistic, um, you know, that I suppose that, you know, you, you, number one, you're a farmer for yourself and your own family. But I suppose, look, you would like that if someone on the next generation, uh, you know, would come on at, at this stage already, the farm is three, three generations in the McNamara name, and you would like it to continue as well. Um, but I suppose, look, the, the main focus at the moment is that, you know, we have four children, uh, Quiva, Padraig, Alva and Connor, And I suppose, look, they're all under 14 years of age. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a costly... Um, it's a costly job as well, rearing children that a lot of people out there will know. Um, you know, it's costly to rear a family. So I suppose at the moment, you know, the emphasis on, on the farm is actually, you know, um, making sure that, that, that the lads get a proper education and, you know, and I suppose get a good way of life. And I suppose can can see as well then, um, Emma Louise, that, you know, that farming can be an attractive career and, and you know, can offer good opportunities and that, uh, you know, a good income can be made from it. Um you know that that's that's very important. I think so that that you know that young family members can see that you know that money can be made from actually farming, and it's not a drudge. It's not a, you know a seven day week job, and it's not long days. That okay, there will be difficult days, and spring will be difficult. But also, once you're organised and planned, that farming can be a real, real, real attractive career as well. And it's important for that. And look, that's what I'm hoping to do to try and instill that in in the lads. I suppose I got it when I was growing up. Um, you know, more it was more a hard work ethic with us. But I suppose look, now it's farming is more of a business anyway, Emma Louise. So it's going to be important that you know that you know our lads know um what's what's ahead and what's coming down the track. And it's good that. I can show that it's a positive and let's see how it goes. And look, I guess, John, you've alluded to the fact that dairy farming can give a, you know, a good a substantial income to a farming family. And that's highlighted, you know, time and time again with research that has been done, particularly with the grass based model, which is a low cost uh, system. Um, I suppose if we move on then um, and we think about, I suppose, with the farm, there's 250 cows. You're not going to do all the work yourself and you're in a position where you employ staff. What are the things that you're doing to make, I suppose, the farm an attractive place to work and and you yourself an attractive employer? Yeah, that's quite right, Emma Louise. Um, you know, I suppose, look, you always hope that, you know, that you can have people coming in that are working with you, that are happy and, you know, that they enjoy what they're at. Because to me, that's the most important and you can make it attractive. But I suppose, look, word of mouth is probably the, you know, the important thing that... You know, I, I, you know, to me that any student or any person that has worked on the farm down through the years probably all had a role to play in winning that competition last year because um, no student has ever come on the farm or no worker has ever come on the farm, Emma Louise, that I haven't learned something from as well. Um, and I suppose, look, you, you, you weigh all them up and you put all them, you know, into practice and... Um, and I suppose, look, um, at the moment, you know, I suppose I am, as you, as we've discussed earlier, where, you know, I'm encouraging my own lads to be on the farm. I suppose at the moment I also have, um, you know, a trainee farm manager um, from the farm management, from the diploma in farm management um, in Moorpark. Um, and I suppose, look, I've got help over the years from Palace Kenry as well with the students that, that come here for the two or three months in the springtime. Um, and, you know, I mean, even even I suppose at the moment there's a leaving cert guy as well that goes to school there in Kamalak Secondary School that comes in one evening a week and a day at weekends as well. So, you know, I suppose it's and he's not even from a farm. Um, so I suppose what, what I learned over the last maybe two years as well, that I need to become maybe a lot better at managing people. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm excellent at that or anything like that, um, because I still think you can learn every day with, with people um, because there's always interactions and communications that can, can go right or wrong. And obviously you try and have them as right most of the time. And I suppose with that in mind, Emma Louise, I knew I needed more knowledge and maybe how to manage people and stuff. So I suppose 12 months ago, I took it on myself to um, to, uh, to join the, the, the course at Kerry were running, uh, Targus and Kerry were running in conjunction that um, dairy labour course that was ran over uh, five days. And I suppose, look, it gave me an insight into what I needed to do to make the, the farm yard and the whole farm system that I have here, I suppose, more attractive. And it gave me ideas into, you know, even simple things that, you know, how to... Um, 
you know, put the CV together that I wanted or how was, you know, to put the job description that, that I had to offer here for someone to come in and work or, you know, what I was actually looking for and how to apply for that. And, you know, even, you know, simple like with, you know, rules and regulations in relation to the WRC and, and stuff like that. So I suppose, look, you know, I'm not using that, you know, every single day with all the rules and stuff. But I mean, look, at least I now know the rules and, you know, that I, I have them and I have the knowledge in place. So, you know, if ever I have to use them, I suppose we, we now have them, you know, uh, on farm. And I guess, you know, having labour on farm gives you greater flexibility around, you know, your family. You know, you mentioned, you know, Olivia, there's four children here, so there's a lot going on. You know, what do you get up to when you're not on farm? You know, is there is there other outlets for you? Yeah, sure, Emily. That's very, very important, I suppose. Look, um, springtime is busy, but um, yeah, I suppose I, I try to... Um, you know, not, maybe not do the evening milking once we go once we get out into you know the middle of April on. Um, it's just it frees the evenings up for me, and I suppose look, the, the you're right, like the lads are involved in a lot outside of it, outside um as well in relation to sport and stuff. And look, I suppose I'm involved in that. I, I would always have considered myself a community person. Um, and I suppose look, there's a great love for the parish of Knockaney and uh, you know you know a special growth for where you grew up and stuff. And I think look, that is important for me to try and instill back in that in the lads as well. And um, you know, I suppose. You know, community work is important because it's voluntary and, you know, um, with a bit of pride again in the community like we have here on the farm, you know, it makes the community a better place. And I suppose, look, what am I involved in at the moment? I suppose, you know, I'm involved with the Ladies Football Club in the parish, um, you know, coaching one or two teams, chair of the club. And I suppose I got this year, uh, 2019, got involved as well with the county on the 14 squad. And then I suppose finally then if we if we move back to, I suppose, the next generation and, and you know, getting younger people involved in farming, what are the what are the few things that you're doing, I suppose, here in Knockaney to get the children involved in farming? Well, I suppose, look, just from my own point of view, Emma Louise, I suppose, look, we even get visits here from the, the play school. You know, a play school, like, is probably three and four years of age. And, OK, um, you know, they may not take in a lot of it, but I suppose, look, it's at that age that, you you know, you, you sow the seed maybe. And, you know, um, you know, people start asking questions. And certainly then, like, we also have... Um, you know, some primary school visits and then we have transition years and, and ag science classes coming out from the secondary school as well in John the Baptist and Kilmallock. And I suppose, look, there's other schools, you know, across the country that have been coming to us, um, you know, like Scarif and East Clare have been coming to us probably for 20 years at this stage, uh, Emma Louise, and they, they, they use it as part of, um, they use it as part of their, they, you know, their project work, um, you know, to get marks for the Leaving Cert. You know, we've had Castle Try, we've had Mallow School, you know, I'm probably letting some of them out now, but like we've had various contacts right through the different secondary schools, you know, that'll visit us here and that'll actually just, I suppose, see, you know, I suppose milk, which is now a, you know, a real consumer product, you know, at very, at the primary stage, you know, and, you know, where we can show, you know, that quality product, um, you know, it just can't be right on the shelf. It has to start right on the farm and then, you know, go through the co-op and then arrive on the shelf. And look, it's it's great to show these young people, you know, um, you know, that a career can be made of it. You know, it's still quality life. It's still outdoors. And I suppose at the end of the day where a lot of farmers might say they're not their own boss, which, you know, being controlled by sort of European um, initiatives and European rules and regulations, uh, I still think you organise yourself around them and you certainly still are your own boss. Um, you can decide what time you start in the day. You can decide what time you finish in the day. You can arrange the work, you know, around, you know, you can arrange other stuff around your farming stuff. Um, you know, milking is probably the most important job in any dairy farm and you can arrange your other stuff around it and like that's huge advantage towards maybe you know a, a job in the city where maybe you have to leave at half six in the morning to avoid traffic and you're not back till half six in the evening and that has to be the way every day whereas you know I mean if 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 we need to coach a team over the Easter holidays which is coming up uh, during the day like you know like I'm available to do that you know and I suppose you know that's an advantage maybe that you know that farming has to offer. And anything in particular John you're doing with your own children? Um, I suppose, you know, there's probably lots of things, um, Emma Louise, really. Um, but it's just, look, they, they have, I suppose, they have their own rota on one hand and then there's other evenings where they just come out, you know, they're all out. Um, you know, someone will bring a football back to the farm with him, one party will bring a hurling slitter back to the farm with him and then he'll drop the hurling slitter and he'll do some jobs on the farm and Quee will come back with a football and she'll kick a football around and she'll probably have the football kicked off the wall, Emma Louise, you know, a hundred times before she arrives, you know, at the milk and parlour, but that's fine. And then she'll do her hour or two, in the, you know, in the yard and... And I suppose, no, look, I mean, look, we just, I suppose, thank them, you know, and, you know, once, once we can show them that, you know, I suppose the quality of life that we have and we can thank, you know, show them, appreciate, you know, the work that they do on the farm as well for us and let them see that, that you know, that farming can give a good, 
you know, profitable, I suppose, income and it can be enjoyable, uh, profitable and sustainable. That's great. Thank you, John. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to John McNamara for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey, and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.